Hello and welcome to my second video in my 100 days of uh, videos. Uh, today I want to talk about HSL versus RGB versus hex. And um, my main question came from an article by Chris Coyer. Coyer, however you say it. Um, I'll show you it. Um, it's yay for HSLA. And, um, and I've just noticed that it's published in 2010. So um, quite an old thing really but I just haven't been doing this stuff so um, let's have a look at uh, a quick uh, tutorial I made um, and they are basically um, all the same color and they have um, some transparency on them on hover so just to quickly talk about hex it's normally six digits you can make it eight digits and it will have the transparency and the last two digits you are for the transparency value and are still a hexadecimal number so you you would have to look it up really and find out what is 80 percent in hexadecimal um, then you've got your rgb uh, which is red green and blue so here's the three different values for those colors and they ended up making it but um, whenever i needed transparency i have always used rgba because I can just type 0.8 for 80% or 0.1 for 10%, so on and so forth. And HSL I've never really used. And um, Chris Coyer in his article points out that Photoshop, in fact, uses uh, HSB, so the B is brightness instead of lightness, and uh, it makes the numbers different, so that is probably bang on why I've never used it. Um, but just to show you how that works, is the hue and then your saturation and then your lightness so hue is basically if you see a color wheel uh, all of the colors it starts at red at the top that would be naught and it goes all the way around to 300 and it would be 360 but we started at naught so it's 359 and so you can you can kind of see uh, how that works and the interesting thing about it is um, whereas RGB is 255 which is a weird number I don't know why that is but there'll be a reason um, and hex is just a load of gibberish really this one you can actually go well 360 degrees if I was to halve it I would end up with this green and we would have some sort of a, a complementary color right if I wanted to do the triad colors again it would be mathematically possible just to work out that rotation um, so it's useful and it's easy to work out that potentially um, but more useful is, is understanding how this um, saturation and lightness works. So um, if I do the saturation and I do 35%, you'll see that it's lost a lot of its colour. Uh, if I take it up to 100%, uh, it will be full colour. So I'll go back to 77%. And if we look at the lightness, um, if I take that down to 25%, it loses a lot of the lightness. And if I take it to 85%, it actually gains so much lightness that it loses some color like that as well. Again, I'll take it back and um, show you that. You can see the complementary color I've done here. And all I've really done is, this is naught because it's red. It all starts at the beginning, naught and 359. They meet each other. Um, so I just divided it 359 by 2 and I got 179. And then I've got this sort of green color. Um, and you can kind of see how that works. I've uh, you know, I haven't put too much thought into how I'm doing this, but it's just, for me, a lot of an easier way of, of managing and understanding what you're doing to your colors. If I was using SAS, I would use darken 10%, for example. I would not know whether I can darken it by 10%. I would not know if that's going to turn it into a pure black color. And the same with lighten. I would not know if I'm going to run out of color and it's going to go white. So with this, I could go to 100%, saying, oh, I needed actually another 10%. Well, I just whack it on there, and now I've got it, you know, to an extra 23% or 33% or whatever it was, was I was doing. Um, but to me, it just makes it a lot more manageable. I can't believe that uh, I haven't been using this in the past, but I think for the future, I'm definitely going to use it. Uh, I'd love to know if you're still using Hex. Are you like me? You're just doing it out of habit. Have you, have you had any other reason to change? Do you use... I asked another few web designers, and one said, yep, yeah, I use hex with transparency. Um, I don't know if others are using RGBA or how they're working, but for me, HSLA is the way forwards, and uh, that's what our company will be using. Um, but I'd love to know your thoughts and why you, in particular, use the color scheme you use, and whether you find that easier, 
uh, whether you use color, complementary colors, uh, I probably will still look them up, I suppose, and do things by eye, I suppose. Um, but that's those are my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'd love to know uh, if you're um, using anything different um, and tell me how you work and the reasons you work. I'm sure, people have got some great ideas. Um, this is 100 videos in 100 days. We're on video number two. Please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, follow our other um, socials because we're always sharing other people's content. Uh, great web design stuff out there. And whenever I'm reading it, it's always getting shared. So follow us and hopefully we can all learn some cool stuff together. Thanks for listening.